So I'm making a summary video to try to bring together all the concepts in my other four videos that I've made on the subject in a very condensed format. But you need to hang into the end because at the end I'm going to explain how we kill this pandemic from spreading anymore in the U.S. and the other first world industrial nations. You might think it's a pretty easy answer. Which one of these is more likely to be dead? The people riding on the train like crazy people? Or the girl on the right in the mass transit with a mask? But you might be wrong. If she lives in the United States versus Canada versus Australia or Bangladesh, she might be at more risk. Let's look at India. And the reason I brought up India is you know these people live close together. And they ride trains. They ride them on the outside with the windows open, everybody hanging out. They do mass transit everywhere. Very few cars. But look at the U.S. at the top. Look at New York State. That giant bubble is New York State. And look how everything underneath it is huge red bubbles. Why is the Northeast so bad? New York City... Almost 7,000 dead. And if you look at the counties around it, it's amazing. Amazing how much. But then look, let's look at the states. Does she live in New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, D.C., or Maryland? They have a rail system that runs between these. And these people commute daily. They are 61.03 percent of the deaths in the U.S. and they're only 18 percent of the population. It's not because they're densely living together. It's another factor. And the previous showed you a little bit why. I think she's more likely to be dead than these people on the train. So when we look at the U.S., we see that Texas is very small. I live in Texas, so I'm going to zoom in there and I'm going to share with you data about how this is really was spreading and has really stopped. So if you look at Texas, your red, your red areas are all around the big cities. Dallas, Fort Worth, Lubbock, Austin, San Antonio, Houston. I live in the Houston area. We've got neighboring counties that have mass transit into the city. Montgomery County is one, has four deaths. Houston, I think, has 28 or 38 for the county and the city together. But the neighboring counties do not have fatalities, and they do not have major outbreak. These people commute into the city of Houston, but you see how low their numbers are. And just two counties away, we have counties with zero fatalities. This is with no fatalities and no active. And if we zoom back out, you'll see a lot of Texas has no cases at all. And here's how it's happening. This is somebody's commercial picture about virus being spread by air conditioning. You have to know a little bit about air conditioning, and I happen to be the guy to teach you. So in a home, we try to turn the air every 12 minutes. Commercially, we try to turn it every six minutes. So it's twice the velocity of air coming out of this duct. When you get to a vehicle, it's two to three minutes. The air, you feel it moving most of the time if you don't have a jacket on. But the six foot spacing is absolutely ineffective in a bus or a train. And you think, okay, so they can just spray it. No, the first next person that walks in with this virus, breathing it out or on their jacket or whatever, it's airborne again. But the buses are open. So our little lady, who's most likely dead by now, gets on, she's clean, she's got her mask. But here comes the air conditioning, showering her with COVID-19 and other viruses. Before long, she's got it on her eyebrows, her hair, her jacket, her shoes, her pants, her hands. Does she know all that's contaminated? No. Would you get on that train? 
that's really what you're getting on is a bug infested mess this is what you should wear if you're going to get on mass transit in the northeast right now a full hazmat outfit that's disposable they probably take it off for each other so they don't contaminate themselves with it on the the outer layer this air could be treated in these buses this little box on the left is a light producer that puts a uv light in an air conditioner system that they're showing you kills the viruses it could be treated but it's not because our cdc is helping spread this disease by not telling the truth about these air conditioners and heaters and how that air distribution keeps it and six foot is not effective spacing when you're on a bus or a train the air is moving much too violently every time these people get on their mass transit that's still running in the northeast they're getting coated with coronavirus thank you so to summarize you're being bathed with coronavirus that's still alive by the air conditioning in your mass transit so people that live in the northeast and the other uh, condensed mass transit supported cities every day in their commute they get on a bus then they hit hit a train or they hit a subway and or combination of the three and they get a little bit every single day that's what overwhelms their system and that's why there is so many deaths in new york city this mass transit they have no way to prove this air is clear but you do have a way to prove that it's not. And I've done research and I'm going to show you a simple test that can be collected from the surfaces in the buses, trains that your family member that's died riding or is sick because of. You can make the responsible parties responsible. This Hawk Engineering, Hawk Environmental Testing has a swab kit you can buy. For $365, go out to your dead family member's bus in the morning and just swab it. Send it off. But if you want to take the, your municipality to court, this is what will kill this, this pandemic in the U.S. People get an environmental or a test lab to take the test and do it for you. Now you have somebody that's certified in environmental data collection. Even if you spend a couple thousand dollars, if we get 10 people to do this in New York City, they will shut their transit and they will get serious about making this air quality. 10 people in New York City will shut this bus system down and stop this contagion. That's all we need. We need people to get active. I'm going to put the link on my website on Hurt in Texas Work and in the notes below under more. And you can find, stop the video on the pictures. Thank you. We need to stop this pandemic and get people back to work as soon as possible. The actual life of America depends on us getting to work in the next week.